Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned into the Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The spring and summer issue of KC Moore, the city's biannual magazine, is now available online at kcmo.org slash kcmoore. This magazine features the spring curbside leaf and brush collection schedule, as well as helpful articles about the city's basic services, public safety, community initiatives, and much more. Please note that while previous issues of Casey Moore have been mailed to city households, the new issue is only available online as a cost savings measure. However, residents without internet access may request a print copy by contacting the 311 call center. The city recently celebrated its 160th birthday at City Hall. Staff and elected officials joined with community members to celebrate this milestone with cake and refreshments. So on this day, exactly 160 years ago, there were 67 voters who came together to incorporate a small area that was only 10 blocks west to east and five blocks north to south and hung a sign facing the Missouri River saying, welcome, to the city of Kansas. Our borders were very small, Independence Avenue on the south, Holmes Road on the east, Missouri River on the north, and Summit Street on the west. But our dreams were really, really big. During a press conference held at City Hall last week, Bright Farms and the Port Authority announced that a 100,000 square foot greenhouse farm will be built in Kansas City along the Berkeley Riverfront development. Bright Farms just opened a very similar greenhouse farm in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, right near the border with New Jersey. And we're constructing right now in, in Brooklyn, New York, in St. Louis, Missouri, and in St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, Kansas City stood out as being unique among other cities in this country as being very, very hospitable toward urban agriculture. As far as the Berkeley Riverfront development, that was the city's idea, actually. They, they brokered a deal between us and the Port Authority, and when we saw it and saw its location and how it was close to the river, close to an industrial area, close to a developing area, and close to the city market, we fell in love with it. We buy a lot of food, and when I say that, I mean the city of Kansas City, uh, the zoo, our school districts across the city, they all buy food. And they all right now have to buy that food away from the city. This presents an opportunity to use our buying power, our taxpayer dollars, in the service of our people for jobs and for better product. And that's what's exciting to me. The farm will develop Kansas City's urban agriculture with the goal of providing enough fresh produce to feed 5,000 residents, while creating 25 full-time jobs and more than 100 construction jobs. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. This spring, your city facilities are hosting many exciting performances and events. Are you up for a new experience? If you've never watched the Kansas City Roller Warriors, you're missing a true blend of sport and spectacle. April 6th is their next home game at the Municipal Auditorium, and the season continues through August. Come out and see the Black Eye Susans, the Dreadnought Dorothys, the Knockouts and Victory Vixens go toe to toe. For ticket prices and details on upcoming home games, visit kcrollerwarriors.com. Broadway Magic comes to Kansas City from April 9th to the 14th at the Music Hall with a spectacular production of Mary Poppins. Critics have called it roof-raising, toe-tapping, high-flying extravaganza, as well as a perfect piece of musical theater. So gather your family and friends and get swept up in the fun. Walk-up sales are available at the Municipal Auditorium box office Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also purchase your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or by calling 800-745-3000. 
Eat, drink, and help support harvesters at the 17th Annual Forks and Corks on April 25th at the exquisite Grand Ballroom at the Kansas City Convention Center. A wonderful selection of fine food, wine, specialty beers, and coffee will be offered by several dozen local restaurants and beverage makers. The proceeds from last year's Forks and Corks event enabled harvesters to provide more than one million meals to the hungry throughout our community. Tickets are $90 in advance from harvesters.org or $100 at the door. To learn about more events taking place at Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the event calendar or call 816-513-5000. One thing March Madness makes apparent, when it comes to keeping your composure under stress, those that practice over and over and over again do the best. Now magnify that stress hundreds of times for police officers who unwittingly become part of a gunfight. That's why our recruits go through our firearms training simulator. At the training academy they're exposed to floor to ceiling video screens that provide a 180 degree view of many different scenarios. Imagine for a moment you're in their place. You make a car check and the driver reaches back into their vehicle. One time a gun, another time a cell phone. With just a keystroke, the operator can change the scenario and the officer has to make the decision in a split second. Much like a basketball player must practice to be an elite player, officers must train to be safe. Basketball players learn to play under stress and to focus on their form and technique to improve their shot percentage. Most of the elite players don't have to think about this during the game because they have already practiced to the point that the only way they know how to shoot is the right way, the way they have practiced. This type of preparation is even more important for an officer. You will fight the way you train, so train the way you want to fight. We are pre-programmed to react to stress in a certain way. Many officers note that after being involved in a stressful shooting, they don't remember drawing their firearm. There's a reason for that. It is because their training had prepared them to react like this without the need of cognitive thought. The reaction had become a habit. Under stress, the portion of our brain that controls cognitive thought begins to shut down and the portion of our brain that reacts based on habit begins to control our actions. As I said before, some of this habit is already programmed into officers without training. Some of that programming is not necessarily a safe option. To understand our body's reactions to stress will only assist with our ability to better prepare ourselves to be safer officers. Additionally, all of our officers must requalify using their weapon at the range annually. An officer's best chance at keeping citizens and themselves safe is by training to react the way they want under stress. I'm Captain Ty Grant. Have a safe week. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. Our parks and facilities offer a wide variety of events and programs for you and your family to enjoy this spring. For example, the 23rd Annual Blue River Rescue is Saturday, April 6th from 8 a.m. to noon at Lakeside Nature Center in Swope Park. This is Missouri's largest one-day cleanup project and requires help from volunteers. Residents are invited to get a group together to help beautify the Blue River by planting trees, picking up trash, and checking the quality of the river water. Refreshments will be served, and all volunteers will receive a t-shirt and gloves. Visit lakesidenaturecenter.org for more information. A holiday unique to Kansas City, Fountain Day, will be celebrated on Tuesday, April 9th at 11 a.m. On this day, all Kansas City fountains will turn on for the season. This year's Fountain Day festivities will take place at The Children's Fountain, located at the intersection of North Oak Trafficway and Missouri Route 9. The Children's Fountain was dedicated in 1995 and features six dancing, playful bronzed boys and girls crafted by Kansas City sculptor Tom Corbin. 
It is one of 48 publicly owned fountains maintained and operated by Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Check out our facilities, amenities, and programs for free on April 13th and 14th during KC Parks Community Center Spring Open Houses. On Saturday, eight community centers will showcase their spring and summer programming options from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., while Lion Creek Community Center will offer free open ice skating from 2 to 4 p.m. On Sunday, KC North, Southeast, Tony Aguirre, and Hillcrest Community Centers will open from noon to 6 p.m. Free open ice skating at Lion Creek will take place from 12.20 to 2.20 p.m. For more information about these and other parks and recreation events and activities, visit kcmo.org parks and click on the events calendar. Or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Looking ahead, the city's spring curbside leaf and brush collection begins the week of April 1st for residents in the city's central zone. On their regularly designated trash pickup day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb. Collection for residents in the south zone will be the week of April 8th and pickup for residents in the north zone will be the week of April 15th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org slash trash. Wage earning residents have until Monday, April 15th, to file their 2012 earnings tax returns and pay any tax due. This deadline also applies to the profit earnings tax for businesses on a calendar year accounting cycle. Wage earners may use the city's free online system which can be accessed at kcmo.org slash wage. Taxpayers who prefer to mail in tax returns can download forms online at kcmo.org slash finance or call the Revenue Division at 816-513-1120. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org Scroll to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the Weekly Report for links. Well, that does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.